Hello friends, in this video we are going to solve a 1D heat conduction problem in Cartesian coordinates using finite difference method. Our objectives are to present a simple 1D heat conduction problem, solve the problem analytically, provide a brief introduction to finite difference method, solve the problem using finite difference method, compare the results, vary the grid spacings at and obtain solutions using finite difference method. We have a one meter long copper bar. One end of the bar is kept at 100 degrees Celsius. The other end of the bar is kept at 1000 degrees Celsius. Our objective is to find the temperatures at various locations along the length of the bar. The general heat conduction equation in 3D Cartesian coordinates is given below. Dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square plus dou square t by dou z square plus g over k equals 1 over alpha dou t by dou t. The uppercase t is the temperature, which is a function of the spatial coordinates x, y, z and time. Alpha is the thermal diffusivity given in meter square per second. Alpha equals K over rho C. K is the thermal conductivity of the material in watts per meter Kelvin. Rho is the density of the material in kilograms per meter cube. C is the specific heat capacity of the material in joules per kilogram Kelvin. G is the volumetric rate of internal heat generation given in watts per meter Kelvin. And this is the source term. Our assumptions regarding material thermal conductivity is given below. We assume that the thermal conductivity does not vary along x direction, for instance. Likewise, in, it doesn't vary along y and z directions. So we consider homogeneous values at each of these directions. Also, we assume isotropic conditions. This means kx equals ky equals kz equals k. For 1D steady state heat conduction with no heat generation, equation re reduces to a simpler form. We assume temperature does not vary significantly along the y and z directions when compared with the x direction. Also, there is no heat generation. That means g equals 0. The temperature is also independent of time as we assume a steady state. So our equation 1 reduces to dou square t by dou x square equals 0. t is a function of x. This PDE is in fact an, an ODE and is represented as d square t by dx square equals 0. t is a function of x. Equation 3 is a second order ODE with constant coefficients and can be easily solved. Integrating equation 3 with respect to ax, once we get dt by dx equals a. Integrating equation 4 with respect to ax, once again we get t equals ax plus b. Here a and b are constants of integration. Equation 5 represents a boundary value problem. To solve equation 5, we need two boundary conditions, which we have in this case. At x equals 0, t equals t and 1, which is 100 degrees Celsius. At x equals 1 meter, t equals t and 2, which is 1000 degrees Celsius. Substituting the boundary conditions into equation 5, we can solve the unknowns a and b. And equation 5 now becomes t of x equals 900 times x plus 100. This is the exact solution of our differential equation. The above problem is a simple problem and hence can be solved analytic analytically. Many complex problems cannot be solved easily analytically and we need to resort to numerical methods. Here we utilize finite difference method to solve the above heat conduction problem. What does finite difference method do? To put it briefly, finite difference method converts the differential equation to algebraic equation. Solve the algebraic equations to obtain 
we need to solve the algebraic equations to obtain solutions. Before we, we use finite difference method, we need to understand Taylor ser series expansion of continuous functions. See below some very brief in introduction to Taylor series, which is an infinite series expansion of any continuous function. f of x plus delta x equals f of x plus f dash of x times delta x plus f double dash of x times delta x squared by 2 factorial and so on. f of x minus delta x equals f of x minus f dash of x times delta x plus f double dash of x times delta x squared by 2 factorial and so on. Equation 8 is obtained by replacing delta x by negative delta x. Equation 7 is called the forward Taylor series expansion and equation 8 is called the backward Taylor series expansion. Note delta x is a small value and is a fraction. So the powers of delta x such as delta x squared delta x cubed will get smaller and smaller and hence these terms associated with them can be ignored in general. Now we add equation 9, 7 and 8 and truncating after the second derivative terms we get f of x plus delta x plus f of x minus delta x equals 2 times f of x plus f double dash of x times delta x squared by 2. From the above we get f double dash of x equals f of x minus delta x minus 2 times f of x plus f of x plus delta x divided by delta x squared. Equation 9 is called the centered difference approximation of the second derivative term obtained using Taylor series approximation. Now let's get back to our governing equation that is equation 3 which is given below t double dash of x equals 0 t is a function of x and t at x equals 0 is t and 1 and t at x equals l is t and 2. Here t double dash of x is the same as d square t by dx square. Replacing the second order derivative using finite difference approximation we get t i minus 1 minus 2 times t i plus t i plus 1 by delta x square equals 0. Simplifying we get t i minus 1 minus 2 times t i plus t i plus 1 equals 0. Here, t i minus 1 is the same as f of x minus delta x, t i is the same as f of x, and t i plus 1 is the same as f of x plus delta x. Equation 11 is the finite difference approximation of the original equation which we were trying to solve. Here, i represents the node location on the discretized domain. The finite difference tensile is also given below. Now let us discretize the 1D domain into say 5 segments or grid spacings equally spaced as shown below from 1 to 6. Note that at temperatures, uh, the temperatures at node 1 and node 6 are known and these are the boundary conditions. To apply equation 11 we need to consider the interior nodes 2 to 5. When i equals 2 then equation 11 becomes t1 minus 2 t2 plus t3 equals 0. Similarly, for i equals 3, 4, 5, we get t2 minus 2 t3 plus t4 equals 0, and so on. Since t1 and t6 are known, we can move them to the right-hand side of the equations. The equations are rearranged as below. So, the above equation can be arranged in a matrix form as shown here. We can solve this unknowns t2 to t5 using methodology such as Thomas algorithm method as this is a tridiagonal matrix. We can also use iterative methods such as Gauss-Seidel successive over relaxation or SOR methods etc. Solving the above equation using Thomas algorithm on MATLAB produces the following results. We have T2 equals 280 degrees Celsius, T3 equals 460 degrees Celsius, T4 equals 640 degrees Celsius, and T5 equals 820 degrees Celsius.
In this particular case, the exact solution obtained anal analytically matches the finite difference method solution as the original equation is linear. The graphical results are presented using MATLAB for this case. Using MATLAB or other software, we can develop codes for a general case where the number of grid spacings is say m and we can obtain the solution accordingly. We can, for example, in this particular case, we can change the number of grid spacings from an initial value of 5 to say 1000 and we can uh, look at the results. Let's go back to Mat MATLAB and run our program. This is the program written in MATLAB for this particular problem. And we have the number of sections M given as 5. And let's run this program and see what happens. We have the exact values obtained using uh, obtained analytically as T exact is given below from 280 degrees Celsius to 460, 640, and 820 degrees Celsius. And the same values we get using finite difference methods. And the result is graphically represented here. At node zero, we have a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. And at node one, the temperature is 1000 degrees Celsius. In between, we have a temperature variation as represented graphically. Now we can go back to the program and change our grid spacings, for example, to say 1000. So we'll save it and rerun the program. And the results are represented graphically at 100 degrees C. We have a temperature of 100 degrees C at node 0 and we have a temperature of 1000 degrees C at node 1 and the temperature variation is represented here and the temperature scale is on the right hand side of the graph. We will now go back to our PowerPoint. In this video, we presented a 1D heat conduction problem. We solved the problem analytically and using finite difference method. We compared the results. We presented the results using smaller grid spacings. In future videos, we can explore more challenging problems. Hope this gives you an introduction to finite difference method. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks for watching.